Alright, thanks for watching and today we'll prove the ratio test which you'll see is a lot of fun because we've already done the hard work. So let me just motivate this with an example. So the question is, does the following series converge or diverge? So n over 3 to the n. Before we did it with the root test, but now let's see how to do it with the ratio test. And the ratio test just says, look at ratios of successive terms. So let's look at a n plus 1 over a n, which just becomes n plus 1 over 3 to the n plus 1 over n over 3 to the n. And again, everything is positive, so this becomes 3 to the n over 3 to the n plus 1 times uh, n plus 1 over uh, n. Now, this thing cancels out the 3 to the n's, and you're really left with 1 third times n plus 1 over n. And now take that as n goes to infinity, and you get 1 third. And because, I forgot the conclusion, because this number is less than 1, you can conclude that the series converges absolutely. And the point of today is just um, proving this ratio test. Now, but again, since the limit might not exist, we have to use lim soups and lim infs. You'll see why. So, ratio test. Consider the series. series of a n, then there are a bunch of different cases. If the worst possible scenario, so the limb soup as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 over a n, if the worst possible scenario is still good, is less than 1, so this is 1 and that's the limb soup, this is good and the series converges absolutely then the sum of uh, an, if on this thing, converges absolutely, meaning that the sum of the absolute values converge. Moreover, if the best step possible scenario, so if the lim inf as n goes to infinity of the ratio, if this thing if the best possible scenario is horrible, so if this is 1 and that's the smallest possible limit, then the series diverges. Else, if we're kind of in between, so if the best possible scenario is bigger than 1, is of course smaller than the worst possible scenario. And the worst possible scenario is less than or equal to 1. Then uh, we, we can conclude. This is inconclusive. Uh, let's see. Then, uh, yep. Yeah. No. Okay. Else, if the limb soup isn't bad and the limb inf isn't too big either, then, so else, if we have that the limb inf as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 over a n is less than or equal to 1, and the limb soup is greater or equal to 1, Oh, a n plus 1 over a n. So if we're in neither of those two cases, then it's inconclusive. So 
So it's kind of just in the extreme cases where you can conclude something. If the limb soup is less than one and the limb inf is greater than one. In the other case where the limb inf is here or the limb soup is here, you can't really say anything. Mm. All right. The good news is there's nothing to show because we proved what's called the pre-ratio test in section 12, which just says the following. It says that the root test is way better than the ratio test. So from before, what did we get? We had that the limit of the ratios, a n plus 1, over a n is less than or equal to the limit of the root, which of course is greater or less than or equal to the limb soup of the root. Which is less than or equal to the limb soup as n goes to infinity of uh, a n plus 1 over a n. So this is always true, but now let's see what happens in our cases. So in the first case, if the uh, that right hand side is less than one, so if limb soup as n goes to infinity of a n plus one over a n is less than one, so this thing is less than one, then from the chain of inequalities, we get that the limb soup of the roots is less than one. Of a n to the one over n is less than one. And bang, by the root test, we can conclude that the series converges absolutely. So this thing converges absolutely. by the root test. Okay, second scenario, what if the worst possible limit is greater than one? So case two, if the lim inf as n goes to infinity of the ratios is greater than one, well, following this chain of chain of inequalities, we actually get that the limb soup of a n, the roots, is greater than one. Limb soup as n goes to infinity of the nth root is greater than one. And so bang, the series diverges by the root test. Man, that was so hard to prove. Um, no, but the whole point is also one thing I want you to notice. This kind of shows that the root test is way better than the ratio test because we actually use the root test to prove the ratio test. So the root test has strictly wider scope. Last but not least, uh, what about the, what's it called? The inconclusiveness. Well, again, same series as before, so consider uh, the harmonic series, which diverges, but then in that case, a n plus 1 over a n, that becomes uh, 1 over n plus 1 over 1 over n, which becomes n over n plus 1, which converges to 1. So in that case, we do have that the limb inf in this case, we got that the limb inf of a n plus 1 over a n, well, it's equal to 1 because the limit is 1. So in particular, it's less than or equal to 1, and it's also less than or equal to the limb soup of the ratios. Yet, this diverges. It's almost eat. This diverges. On the other hand, well, if you do the same thing uh, with the sum of 1 over n squared, 
which converges, then essentially you get the same result. So I'm not going to do this again, but uh, in this case it converges. Then you want the limit of the ratios less than or equal to 1, less than or equal to the limb soup of the ratios. Yet, it converges. Which says that in that case, we cannot really conclude anything, and it's inconclusive. All right, very good. And next time, I'll show you some examples to really show that the root test is better than the ratio test. All right, thank you very much.